I want to ask you about uh, Christina Keneally. She had some strong comments on the face of it, at least, in relation to immigration. She wrote an op-ed piece for uh, the Age and City Morning Herald over the weekend, uh, wanting to see a rise in unemployment numbers and weak wages growth reshape, she says, the shape and size of our migrant intake. Uh, how did it go down and do you believe Labor are serious on cutting immigration? Well, uh, you've always got to be very careful uh, when you start using uh, language about putting Australians first when you're talking about immigration. We are a migrant country. Uh, we have built our economy and our society on migrants. Uh, it has helped the economy over the years. Uh, arguably, uh, it has been the Labor Party that has uh, introduced more non-skilled workers than coalition governments. But I think uh, what Christina Keneally did, she made it explicit that she wants to cut the numbers and she's saying, oh, there's a million people out there, Australians, who could do the jobs that currently people are doing on work visas. Well, if that was the case, why aren't they doing the jobs now? Uh, and I think it's a very dangerous uh, element to introduce right now in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis and Bob Carr, and admittedly, there's no great love lost between Christina Keneally and the former Premier Bob Carr, uh, but he's saying, look, it's essentially dog whistling. Uh, and, mm -hmm. of course, when Trump says this about the US and says put Americans first and let's put American jobs first, everyone accuses him of being an isolationist and a protectionist and dog whistling. So I think Christina Keneally... the same Keneally, thing about Paul and Hanson. So what was the prompt yeah. then? Why did, Chris, why did Christina Keneally do it? What was the prompt? Uh, well, uh, we're told that uh, the piece, uh, the opinion piece was cleared by Anthony Albanese's office, but that doesn't mean it is Labor policy. And we've seen Christina Keneally go out on her own on other issues before. I think a lot of this is about Christina Keneally, and I think that she's trying to have, you know, trying to have a debate, but I think the language she used uh, was dangerous, and it has certainly riled some within the Labor Party. Uh, people are saying, no, we, we, we've got to look at the immigration numbers on numbers and not sort of talking about Australians well, it's first. It's incredibly complex, Dennis, as you know, right? It's an incredibly complex area and she's a bit like a missile who doesn't have much of a guidance system on some of this stuff. She just heads off and causes untold damage and destruction. I mean, Labor's looking good in many respects on some of these issues at the moment. It's the, it's the government who's trying to grapple with the big economic get back to work program and uh, she's made herself a story. I want to ask you just quickly, uh, $10 billion, it's almost a rounding error in terms of the submarines, but that's the latest blowout. They say it'll cost us all up $90 billion to build these submarines, but of course that's not the real answer because I think it's closer to about $220 billion once you wrap in the sustainment. This has got to be rethought, doesn't it? Oh, look, uh, <laughs> this has always been the issue uh, for this submarine contract. Uh, it was always going to blow out. Uh, and the problem is the contract is so... The, the parameters set by the Australian government, the Department of Defence, there's a there's 180 pages of technical requirements here, and we don't even yet actually have a signed contract. Now, I think that what we need to uh, look at here is the fact that the French are building a submarine that doesn't exist. They're building it Correct. from scratch. They would have preferred to have had a nuclear. Uh, a submarine that they could just sell off the shelf to Australia. It would have been a better result for Australia. And I think at some stage, and the French have already signalled that they're prepared to change in later years and go back, go to a nuclear sub, I think this is going to be changed. It is going to be very difficult. And I think that uh, the 10 billion, you just say, that's a rounding error. We've got no idea where this contract's going to end up. It is extraordinary. Two dud things, the NBN and these subs. Thank you, Malcolm Turbill. Thank you, Dennis Shanahan. Thank you, Peter. And a call out to all those hard-working teachers. <laughs> all right, leave it there.